the most important thing is that uh, success breeds failure. The more you are successful as a company, the more you see the world from the inside out. You look at the world from either your own product, from your own capabilities, from your own customers, and you don't see the biggest and most obvious opportunities in plain sight, in plena vista, right in front of you, because your, 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 your success of the past has, look, makes you not see what's right in front of you. The biggest problem is that most companies think innovation means finding different technologies, different products, or most marketing people think trying to find different consumers, different consumer segment. Now, I don't know, but maybe, do you think that there is a Google for female, Google for males, Google for sophisticated computer users, Google for novice computer users? There is one Google for everybody, just like there is one iPod for everybody. So innovation takes place in a very different ways. Innovation for Google means how can I absorb and assimilate, how can I own more part of the 1,440 minutes people live. And if you think about that, then the next thing after Google search is maybe Google email, maybe Google images, maybe Google maps, maybe Google shops. Research and development, uh, production, uh, marketing, sales, distribution, consumer. Uh, and it was a model of the value chain allows you to push products through the organization and to the consumer. I think that model is bankrupt. You know, that model is obsolete. If that model is generic. It is actually geriatric. And you know what you do with geriatric people. You, know, you send them to retirement. And you send them to Mallorca or somewhere like that. You know, you, you know, and I think it's time that we stop thinking that the model of innovation and the model of marketing and business is a push model. Actually, today we have, we have a situation where we deal with a very, very, very smart consumer environment, an ever, ever more educated consumer because of the internet. And it will be harder and harder and harder to push that information down. But you need, like Google, if you will, let people find out about it, discover it for themselves, and create markets of conversations, to your point. Howard Schultz, the founder, actually wrote, he said, what I was intrigued when I was in Milan and I was sitting in that cafe, I was intrigued how that cafe I was sitting intersected with people's everyday life, the importance of the cafe, how pe what people actually did there. You know, they laughed, they talked, they ate. And they talked on the mobile phone, they studied, they read. And he said, this created a third place for people away from work and home. And I wanted to recreate it in America. When you start innovating around that in America today or anywhere, you say, what would people want to do outside work and home? Then the innovation of of T-Mobile, Wi-Fi, download, free downloads, of music download, is not radical, it's actually most natural. Innovation goes far beyond just a particular product, but it, it's the entire system that, inno that is innovation. What Sarah has been successful is which, what, which makes Starbucks successful and Apple successful and the companies I describe, and that is that they innovate again and again and again. That is the biggest problem. The biggest problem, in my opinion, is number one, people think that, well, 
um, you know, if I just innovate, the, our company would do better. I don't think so. The occasional brilliance is not good enough to build a company or change a big company like Nestle or something. You need to have a system to innovate again and again and again. Sarah is not successful because of the cheap and chic idea alone, but because of the innovation it brought to the, to, the, to, the, to the marketing of fashion the way they have done. And that is something that you have really put high up and complement what that company has done globally. I describe in the book uh, two companies and, and also how they made growth a process. Uh, it, they are complete. They, they, those companies, Procter & Gamble is one, uh, GE is another one, it's a B2B, uh, uh, business to business, but both have attempted to, to institute tools, systems, processes, methodologies, policies, in order to make innovation more systematic. This is sort of a, a very important part of the book. Innovation is not part of a brainstorm activity, part, just part of, it's not just creativity. Innovation is very systematic, a very systematic process of creating uh, uh, advantage for a company. And, um, and, and the book provides several illustrations of how to make that happen. Mm -hmm.